It's yesterday's news, I know. Edmonton's downtown has a unique way of traveling from the core down the slopes to the river valley. The 100th Street Vernacular has been in operation for almost a year, having opened in December of 2017. It hasn't been without its share of issues, however. For one, it has some problems operating in extreme cold. The car becomes sluggish in temperatures colder than minus 25. Snow and ice getting in the way of the doors causes problems too. Oh, and there have been reports of people rushing across the street at the already somewhat confusing and potentially dangerous piece of road directly adjacent to the funicular. People were also accidentally pushing the emergency stop button, often by simply leaning into it. It has a cover now, but the stop often required manual re-engagement of the car. Finally, the whole contraption needed to be closed down for repairs after the area was vandalized. That fix cost the city $47,000. But even with all that, the funicular is pretty cool. It's established itself as a unique part of Edmonton. And more than once have I heard visitors to our city talk about wanting to go see it. Sure, it's just a slanted elevator, but it makes traversing that area of the city much easier. And it's pretty fun too. You know, as far as elevators go. But did you know it's not the first funicular in Edmonton's history? Oh no, those who championed this project were not the first to envision such a device to assist the ascension to Edmonton's downtown core. It was in fact 110 years ago when Edmonton's McDougal Hill was first conquered by a mechanical inclined lift. Five years prior, the idea was first proposed by a group of Edmonton businessmen. Back then, transporting people and goods from the River Valley and Strathcona meant you had to first cross the river, either by ferry or low-level bridge, and then you'd have to make the steep trek up McDougal Hill Road. And the use of the word road is used loosely. With everything back then being transported either by foot or horse and cart, the steep hill in itself was bad enough. But add in the fact that the so-called roads of the time were largely rough dirt trails, with ruts and mud to bog you down, certainly not the smooth pavement we have today. Throw in an Edmonton winter's ice and snow, and suddenly that six minute Edmonton traffic delay we get once in a while doesn't seem that bad, does it? So, with all that being a daily event for many businesses and residents of the time, the idea of an easier way up and down made quite a bit of sense, especially considering the immense level of industry there was in that area at the time. Before construction of the lift could begin, there were some arguments against it from those who were opposed to the development. It seems that nimbyism is not only a recent phenomenon, it's been a thing for a long time. Local residents were concerned about potential lower property values and an increase in noise and traffic with the implementation of the new inclined lift. Despite this, the project moved ahead, and by fall of 1907, the officially titled Edmonton Inclined Railway was well under construction. The bottom of the railway started about halfway up the hill, right about where the edge of the Chateau Lacombe parking structure exists today. The railway itself was just a bit longer than an NHL-sized hockey rink, at about half the width. It consisted of two side-by-side -side platforms, or rail cars, one at the top and one at the bottom, both traveling in the opposite direction at the same time. At 28 feet long by 18 and a half feet wide, each platform was just over 500 square feet, and was divided into two sections. First, a large cargo area, large enough to carry two stagecoaches side by side. Second, a small hallway-style passenger area. The railway was originally meant to operate on electricity, but the power demand required was too much for the infrastructure at the time. After briefly considering coal as an energy source, they settled on steam engine, which seemed to go hand in hand with the name of the Edmonton Incline Railway. The railway opened on May 20th, 1908. Rides up and down the railway were 15 cents for wagons and motor cars, also known as automobiles. There's one car that takes you anywhere you want to go, the Model T. Strong, sturdy, with a will of its own. Rides up and down the railway were 5 cents for pedestrian passengers. That translates to around $3.50 per wagon or car and just over a buck per person in today's prices. Of course, the road up the hill was still open, as were a flight of stairs adjacent to the lift. You gotta remember, back then, people were quite accustomed to walking long distances. Cars were not widespread, and it would take way longer to set up a horse-drawn wagon than it would to just walk somewhere. 
So many people decided it would be much more cost effective to simply walk. And in the middle of a cold Edmonton winter, would you want to stand there waiting for a lift or just get to your destination as fast as possible? I imagine the same went for wagons too. The road was still open. If you were a business person at the time making the trek up the hill daily with your supplies, those costs would add up pretty quickly. With all this in mind, it's not shocking to hear that after only six or seven months of operation, the Edmonton Incline Railway was already in financial trouble. The railway requested city help to continue with operation. The city auditor looked deeper into the railway, and after seeing just how bad of a shape the operation was in financially, the city refused involvement. The next month, the operation went into liquidation, and a few months after that, the company was reorganized and continued operation under a new name, the Donald Ross Incline Railway Company Limited. But the money problems didn't go away. The railway then began seasonal closures during the winter, but that still didn't help, and only two seasons later, the city inspector found the hoist to be unsafe, and the railway ceased operation. The Donald Ross Incline Railway Company approached the city and encouraged them to take over operation as a city service. Despite the seasonal closures and financial issues, Edmontonians were still using the railway and it did make hauling loads to and from the river valley a lot easier. But based on the poor condition of the railway, both physically and financially, as well as the upcoming completion of the high level bridge, the city decided once again to pass on the opportunity. The same went for everyone else, as no buyer was interested in purchasing the company. So, four short years after it opened, the operation closed in 1912. While the railway itself was torn up almost immediately, its footprint and adjacent stairway remained for nearly 50 years, up until the mid-1960s when the Chateau Lacombe began construction. So, the next time you're strolling through downtown Edmonton, take a swing down beside the Hotel McDonald, towards the Edmonton Funicular. As you descend down to the River Valley Lookout, Reflect on what it must have been like in our city over a hundred years ago. No paved sidewalks, no automatic heat or air conditioning. Commuting by foot, not via pedway or interconnected skyscrapers, but along the dirt roads and wooden promenades. Remember the original inclined ascension up and down McDougal Hill. One which ran on steam and commonly carried horses and carriages. One which lasted only a few short years. Remember the Edmonton Incline Railway. Did you know about the original version of our city's funicular? If our current version costs money, would you still use it? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, throw us a like, and maybe even a share. And why not check out some of our other videos, mostly about the greatest indoor show on earth, West Edmonton Mall. Oh, and thanks for watching.